So welcome to ESL TV for the one and only, I turned the wrong PC up there, and um, we got your Brink sounds in the background, for the Brink Championship semi-final. Joining me is Josh, who is um, a familiar-ish face here on ESL TV. We've managed to uh, hook up, so to speak, on a few shows uh, here, there, and everywhere uh, in the past. We also have someone who's not sat here, but who is technically with us for tonight, and that, of course, is Grease Scotsman. How are you doing, Grease Scotsman? I'm doing quite well. How are you? I'm fine. We've been working through a couple of little technical issues here, but we seem to be in the right place. Now, uh, Josh, I, I should probably ask you how you're doing as well. I, I already asked you that early, so it just kind of slipped my mind when we started the show. I'm fine. I'm fine. That's <laughs> He's good. lying. He doesn't really care how you're doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's actually more like it, but let's not say anything about that. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, about Brink because we've not shown any Brink on ESL TV so far, and I think this is a great opportunity to see a high-end game and for some people who've not really seen Brink and what it has to offer to get into it. So, Josh, why don't you just give us a bit of a breakdown on you know what we're going to see tonight in terms of competitive play within Brink? Well, the thing with Brink that I find is it's really difficult. It's it's a team game, and it, you can't just run in one by one. I mean, if you compare things to, like, Counter-Strike or whatever, you know, one person may be able to take out two or three before he gets taken out himself. It won't work like that in Brink because you could get molotov you could get flashed, you could get detonated, and overall, they just need pure teamwork. Otherwise, it's just not going to work out. And this game here tonight, SJS versus RZ, uh, obviously they've come quite a long way. I'm going to show you a little bit of information about the Brink uh, Championship here. First of all, uh, first up is the prize money, which is what the teams probably care about the most, let's be honest. Um, and of course, first place will be taking 7,000 euros, second place 4,500 euros, third place 1,500 euros, fourth place 800, and fifth to eighth place take home three hundred euros uh, and obviously the final will be played at gamescom here in cologne so uh, that big first place uh, prize is going to be decided here in uh between the 17th to the 21st of august i'm not sure exactly uh when the date is for the brink final but um i'm sure it's in there somewhere i think around friday or saturday uh at gamescom if my memory serves me correct so you know because we're a little bit delayed i want to kind of skip over the the tournament as a whole and you know just show you some of the the results here, which I'm sure this first slide is a really great one for Josh because his team is in bright red because they lost in the playoffs. <laughs> um, I, I'm just going to bring those up here quickly. I won't go over them for too long because we want to get kicked off and get into the game. Uh, but this is a round of 16. As we went through the group stages, then obviously into the playoffs, this is the first round of those playoffs. Uh, hardware for you who are actually playing or maybe playing, uh, <laughs> we'll talk about that later on, uh, in the other semi-final, beat Defiance in the first round. Burn which Burn, the Russian team beat uh, HTS in their first game. Rasta Gaming beat, uh, what does that say? <laughs> uh, Mouse Sports, Josh. Uh, in their first game in the group stages. Sorry, mate. Um, and then Epsilon <laughs> beat Core Play in their first one. And then over on the other side of the bracket, Rush Zone beating VVV. Um, Cost We Can beating Origin. SGS taking down Team Dignitas. And Veritas taking out Feel the Look. And I just want to make sure that my... Uh, yeah, that I knew that was going to happen. That my slides were in the wrong order somehow and I would have shown the wrong round. So here's the next round then. The uh, quarterfinals, if you will. Hardware for you taking down Burn Witch Burn. Epsilon taking out Rasta Gaming. Rush Zone took out uh, Cos We Can. And SGS won against Veritas. And that, of course, sets us up for the position that we're in now, which is the round of four, otherwise known, of course, as the semi-finals. Today's game, Rush Zone versus SGS. Tomorrow's game, fingers crossed, Hardware for You versus Epsilon. Um, and let's talk a little bit. First of all, Chris Scotsman, what's your thoughts on the game tonight? Who do you think is going to be picking this one up? Um, well, I've seen both SGS and Rush Zone play, but there's something really significant that we have to talk about. And that is the fact that the spawn times are different than anything that we've cast on uh, Brink TV. Um, and I imagine anything that's, as you said, uh, that's ever been cast on ESL TV. Um, and this can be kind of new to the players, too. This change just came out, um, I guess it was about a week ago, where the defense spawn times are now uh, increased by 10 seconds across the board, pretty much, which was something that the competitive community asked for. Um, so I think everyone's really happy to have it, but um, what we're hoping to not see tonight are any sort of double full holds. So um, I would kind of give it to SGS just based on what I've seen out of them in terms of their um, teamwork and their shots. However, you know, again, the fact that the respawn times 
it's a pretty drastic change for these players. I don't think they've had a lot of practice um, with uh, with these new spawn times, so we might see something totally different. And uh, what I have seen out of Rush, though, they, they do tend to um, kind of pull together. Um, they might hit their head against the wall a little bit, but then they'll, they'll figure out a, a good way to get a break. Whereas SGS seems to have a better, they do a better job of just more persistently um, executing a, a particular strategy and just making it work for them. Um, so I'm a little bit curious to see if um, the Rush Zone has enough flexibility in, in what they're going to be putting together uh, in order to handle what SGS is going to throw at them. And Josh, we talked outside a little bit earlier on when you first arrived here at the studios. Uh, you were pretty much all in favor of SGS there. You said, well, they've been practicing like madmen for this. So uh, you were kind of really on their side for this game. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the th main thing is Rush Zone have always been a consistent team. There's no doubt about that they deserve to be here. They deserve to be in the top four. But whether they deserve to be in the grand final, I think SGS deserve it more because they put more time into it. And SGF have, have, SGS have shown that time and time again. I mean, they beat Epsilon in a, uh, in a final of a Brink tournament. In the top 16, they knocked out Dignitas, which I, I thought Dignitas were going to take the entire tournament. So when SGS did that, I was yeah. hands down, SGS. I, I was figuring one of us would, would say that eventually. But yeah, um, you know, Dignitas, who was... I mean, were they pretty much undefeated up to that point? Uh, I, I didn't follow every last match because you guys weren't streaming it, so I would just, you know, basically, you know, click on the website every now and then and get lost. But, um, yeah, so, like, it, was that kind of the first real loss that Dignitas suffered? Uh, a powerful loss? Yeah. I mean, that, that really hurt their egos. Afterwards, after that, they folded. Dignitas really? folded. Okay. Yeah, they don't play Brink anymore. So that was like a punch <laughs> in the gut and wow. the end of the team. So it was literally all or nothing for them. Yeah, pretty much. That, that's rough. Okay. Well, well um, let's yeah. let's talk a little bit about the uh, you know the game as a whole for those that might not be fa uh, you know familiar with the rules and how a team can win oh. here to go through into the next round. Great Scotsman. Okay. <laughs> Great sure. Scotsman, take it away. Yeah, well, <laughs> well uh, yeah, you're gonna see stopwatch tonight, which uh, is basically. One team tries to set a time, and if they're successful, setting a time means they get through all the objectives um, before 20 minutes are up. And if they're able to do that, then the opposing team uh, has a, they they switch sides, and the opposing team has a chance to try to beat that time. Um, and if they can beat the time, then the team that beats the time gets the win. If uh, if they're unable to beat the time, then the team from the first round that set the time gets the win. So it's all about are you faster than the other team? It's, it's uh, hopefully we're not going to see any full holds. And a full hold is where a team is not able to get through the objectives. So, um, yeah, basically it's all about setting times. And uh, if you are able to um, basically ha have the faster time, then you get two points. If both teams draw, then uh, they will be awarded one point. Um, and uh, I guess, let's see, it's uh, basically first... First team to at least three points. Of course, if if we have um, you know both maps played and one team just blows out the other one in terms of setting times, then uh, it'll result in a 4-0, for example. Yeah. So yeah, is that, is that a good summary? Yeah. I, I that, think that was uh, pretty much spot on uh, <laughs> for me, at least. Uh, I, I think we're almost ready to go here. The players have actually been uh, warming up for quite a while. We have five on each side, so I guess we can tell them that we're ready and uh, we can get this one underway after we've gone over the uh, tournament structure and stuff. If you guys want to f uh, see it yourself, all you have to go do is go over to esl.eu. At the top there, you can see top games. Click it, then you've got Brink in the list, and it'll take you uh, straight over towards the championship page. Um, actually, one of the easier places to navigate uh, at the moment on the ESL because it is in that top games uh, area on the front page. Um, so, uh -huh. good job, <laughs> Boshi, the admin who just sent me a message on Skype that said, "Can I make you look at the PC?" And obviously, uh, kind of succeeded with that one. But thanks for the uh, useful information that you were throwing there, the admin. Always good. And it looks like we are going to be ready to go for this one. Obviously, our two experts here today, Grease Scotsman on Skype and uh, Josh here in the studio, uh, will be your commentators for this one because uh, you know they're the experts, a professional player, experienced shoutcaster. And I just realised in my own studio, I'm totally out American. Yes, yes, you are. That's ridiculous. We're, we're I didn't think you. about this until now. I was like, wow, 
I'm really the uh, I'm out foreigner in this uh, in this room, <laughs> so that's good. Uh, good. But it looks like we're ready to go, actually. Yeah, yeah. we're just yeah, waiting we're, for uh, Ducky. Ducky. Yeah, actually, make sure you say Ducky because if oh, here he goes. There we but go. yeah, if you, if you say Dookie, he gets really mad. Um, and uh, next, go ahead and run the rosters as, as we have the countdown for security. Who's going to be on the attacking side? We have Apoc, Rio, uh, Ati, Zernok, and Samurai. And if you want to, uh, Josh, run the resistance, please. Uh, yeah, for uh, Rush Zones, we've got Midair, GFN, Born, In, and Ducky. I was going to say Dookie. I always like saying Dookie. It just sounds more, I don't know, standard. Yeah, he, he sounds so mad about it, though, that he'll come to your house and punch you in the nuts. So <laughs> you need to really be careful uh, about saying the wrong thing. That being said, this first objective is a uh, bomb objective. And uh, if you'll see... Um, well, I, I don't know exactly where you are spectating, but if you're anywhere near the objective, we actually have Rust Zone uh, trying desperately to hold on. It looks like they've been able to flatten at least two SGS, but we don't exactly have uh, Gibbs on everybody, so there's always the potential for a revive. Um, there is no self-revive in the ESL rule, I believe, so... Um, the objective that Rush Zone's trying to protect is this door that can be planted on either side. And um, most teams sort of call them... Um, uh, blue side and red side, blue having this sort of more, uh, yeah. I guess, bluish hue. Yeah. And um, and, the, and the red side, of course, having a bit of a, a reddish hue to it. But other than that, there really aren't any markings that, that uh, demarcate uh, these these two objective sides. Um, yeah, but either, either side is valid. So uh, the defending team has to pretty much, what you'll see is uh, they'll kind of face most of their firepower towards one end, and then they'll use things like their engineers' mines and turrets to try to defend uh, from the other way, or at least give a, a heads up that the team is attacking from, from the other side. So right now, SGS uh, attempting a, a backstairs um, push from the blue side. They're actually getting a plant right now. Get it. Rio will get it for sure. Yeah. Rush Zone was completely caught off guard there. Um, they had Born and Ducky, and they went down pretty quickly. And of course, that left a choke point that we see Xernox's body near, near APOC to try to cover, and they just uh, were completely flattened. So. Um, wow, I, we actually have uh, objective timers. I love this. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have to go look at the uh, at the objective and say there is 14 seconds left to the detonation. So thank you, Splash Damage, for continuing to improve I think, your. I think game. Rio's gonna take this right here. Although I I'm not quite sure. There is four seconds left on it. I don't know if they've got anybody. No, on because it. there's no. Um, yeah, yeah, there's, there's no. The, what, what do you call it? The ability, the, the perk, whatever. Yeah. The ability to, to shorten the diffuse time I don't think is available in the ESL rules. I'm not exactly sure on that, but I think I'm right. I'm just going to um, go fly around over here because following a person is uh, pretty difficult, but here I'm going to go to the bar. <laughs> um, now the point for the people who haven't played Brink, the uh, second point is to get a hostage. And uh, you've got to take the hostage. You can see as I'm flying all the way back here, they have a medic and a soldier on this hostage. And the point is to get this hostage all the way to the boat, which is five, six minutes away, would you say, Grease? Yeah, easily. If you take a look, uh, they, they do have a, this is just two objectives on this map. They have a good you know, 16 minutes and 50 seconds left to try to complete it. But they're going to need a good chunk of that time. I mean, I think some of the fastest times that we've seen are about... Um, nine minutes long, yeah. and and uh, kind of an average that we've seen for even blowouts uh, tend to be uh, more than more than ten minutes. So, um, this bar, this uh, Kyudin bar, uh, basically this uh, this escort is on rails. Uh, he just kind of walks his path. But there are a couple of things to to mention in order to keep him going. Um, the medics have to make sure that he has uh, some sort of health. Whenever his health bar gets completely taken down, then he will be um, he'll just fall to his knees and stay there until a medic gets to revive on him. Now the second component is that anyone on the SGS team must be in proximity of this escort uh, in order to keep him moving. That being said, let's move forward uh, up to where the action is. We got a lot of dead red zone up near um, one of the main choke points for their for their spawn wave leading up to. Uh, the, the upper level. So, wow, it looks like SGS is trying, uh, Apox actually trying to press in all the way. It's going to get pulled down, but uh, he tried to push all the way up to the rush zone upper spawn exit. So that's a, that's a pretty aggressive maneuver. Well, the thing that I always find about Ducky is he's really consistent. His aim is probably one of the best on, uh, on rush zone. And 
he's going to be going up against the likes of Samurai, who is also a really consistent player. So that's a feat in its own, going 1v1 against each other to see who comes out uh, above that is, is probably going to determine if the point gets hold held or if it gets taken. And right now, SGS are going for the command post. And uh, for command posts, for the people at home that don't understand, there is supply command posts and there is health command posts. Although I don't know if that was removed. I, I, th I think I think they added um, the like one pip that you can't do the improved command post buffs, but I think they are worth capturing in ESL for uh, one pip for either health or supply. Yeah. Um, now that being said, uh, you were you called out Ducky just a minute ago. He made a great play through the the air vents. I'm not sure if you spent some time up oh, there, but um, he made a great flanking play and he was able to get several. Uh, kills that actually has halted this SGS progress uh, and it was really the first um, stop that we've seen at all so fantastic work by Ducky and he did that pretty much single-handedly he had a little bit of help but um, the, the flanking was was kind of key so now we're finally seeing Rush own a chance to uh, set up and we've got uh, GFN trying to set up on the upper balcony he's kind of uh, back and forth around these back stairs that are kind of overlooking the ramp the ob uh, escort objective is kind of sitting at the top of the ramp not quite at the um, at the crook in the L of the ramp, so um, this is actually kind of a prime place for Rush Zone to, to try to hold, but as you can see here, here comes SGS completely smashing Samurai at the top of the stairs and looking to try to take down two. He's yeah. able to take down Born and GFN, quick succession, ATI from below, able to get the kill, so there's a revive, and I think they're about to push pretty seriously. Here comes uh, Midair. Oh, why did he drop down? You can stay up there and just, you know, nade like crazy and you know, go nuts. I'm a horrible cameraman. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but yeah. <laughs> apologies for that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, overall, I mean, right now, it seems SGS are in the hot seat right here because the, as you can see on the screen, there is the hostage. He's got near full health. I mean, one more buff would put him at the tippy top. And uh, he's, he's getting pretty far. And I'll go outside for you folks to see. He's got to get to this boat right here. If he gets to this boat, it's over. They, they've completed the map, and then they yep. go to defense, and it's all on Rio, Rush Zone. Yeah, Rio's the last guy standing um, up up top. And it looks like we finally got a respawn wave. We got uh, Born and Inf coming in right now. Midair has joined. And it, we may see, yes, finally the objective's going to get held. Oh, my God, we have a revive here. Zernok comes up and goes down very quick. But here comes... Apoc trying to dance around the glass and he goes down. Dookie, uh, excuse me, Ducky, damn it. Ducky <laughs> from behind. <laughs> Dookie from behind. That's, but that hey, it fits. That doesn't it sound, fits. That doesn't sound no. right. Yeah. Don't, don't say that. <laughs> this, this is professional stream right here. Yes, yes, clearly. Um, yeah, so we got uh, Rust Zone able to set up again, but quite frankly, we're looking at uh, not even eight minutes past. So SGS, one more solid push. They, they might get it done. Um, we don't know. Oh, yep, there he is. There's the repair on the lift generator, in fact. Joe looks um, like he wants to say something. Yeah, so here's my <laughs> role in this whole show is to, you know, bring the guys who don't see much brink and try and fit some questions in there that they might have. One of which is, what is a, you know, a rough kind of average time for this map? A complete uh, map? Like, for them to finish the entire to map? To finish the hostage from me. Uh, I think the fastest I've seen was about 11 minutes, 30 seconds left. So, and that was Dignitas yeah. versus... This was a while ago when Dignitas were still, you know, the top dogs. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, yeah. the... the I, the averages don't really make any sense because of the respawn time change. It's such a significant yeah. change. It's a, it's a good change. It's, it's a, you know, definitely a change for the better. But um, it means that any times from before are kind of, uh, you can throw them out because it's just, uh, it's almost a completely different game right now. That being said, Rush Zone is still holding up to the, holding on to the upper objective um, area. Um, and they want to try to keep this height advantage. If they lose it, if they, all uh, drop down, and they'll become pretty vulnerable to, to nades and things like that, um, especially also getting flanked. Um, I'm not sure where the camera is right now, but uh, you might oh, want to point out. A, uh, second that, in in fact, that's where SJS is coming from right now. They got uh, four guys coming up this pathway. GFN spots them, and he's uh, able to get one nade off, but he has not gotten any kills. Rio is, is uh, flanking, and he's starting to push in. We've got midair up top. Uh, getting naded as well. They haven't quite pressed to the other yeah, go. The uh, objective guy is on his feet, and Ducky and Born are the last two guys out here. If they go down, it might be all over. 
Yes, and, and this will be it here. If GFN can't stop the movement, no. we have the escort nearly there. Oh, there's him. He's coming in. He's going for it. He takes out Zernok, and Midair nice. takes out Samurai. So that could be a little bit of a lifeline there as Midair does nail on to Rio. So they're still trying to hold this off. I mean, the point for Rush Zone right now, I'm just going to call him RZ because I'll get confused. But the point right now is pretty much get as much time as they can. But uh, I don't know how realistic it'll be to go for nine minutes. Well, but... well, actually, I mean, here comes the medic. But Rush Zone has respawned, and they're not quite set up there. So uh, look at this, ATI getting a great job getting behind cover. He's um, not able to get a significant enough of a kill, though. Samurai kind of just jumped right in there. I, I think he kind of wasted his life his a little bit. Face. Yeah, there's the Lazarus grenade. The Lazarus grenade are um, basically syringes that you can throw and anyone caught in the grenade splash radius will be revived. So it's kind of the opposite of a normal grenade. That being said, we do have a revive on the actual objective escort, and he will probably yep. make it this time around. Yep, that's it. They yep. got that one. So about 10 minutes left. Excellent I mean, work, realistically, that's good. That is, yes. that, is, that is a good half. That is a strong half. Uh, the, the thing I'm worried about right now is if Rush Zone can do it in less time. Yes, that's so that's the main problem because I don't I think now that rush zone sort of have a little bit of pressure on them because of the 10 minute finish it's going to be increasingly difficult for them to actually beat their time but you never know as I said at the very start rush zone are a consistent team but SGS I think they'll take it I think they'll hold it long enough but I think it'll be really close yeah Oh, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it'll be pretty close. Um, I'm trying to think. I have seen Rush Zone's attack on this, and I, I think I recall them getting stuck in the bar, in that Kyrudin bar, um, when they played against a, a pretty tough team. So I'm, I'm curious to see if they've kind of ironed out whatever issues they might have had there. Um, the other thing is um, SGS can be absolutely nasty uh, just on the plant objective. So, um, and you might want to... Um, like if you wait for the game to spawn, you'll be able to switch your camera if yeah, you're still yeah. outside, by the way. Just stuck in a place. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll uh, spawn go. you over near the fish. Okay, so we got SGS now. Uh, we'll be playing defense. So they are on resistance, and Rush Zone now takes the role of security. And if you take a look at the mission time, there's about 10 minutes and 30 seconds uh, on the clock. So that is the time to beat. And uh, we already have Rush Zone GFM um, attacking low. Rio is there near the command post. Um, I'm also going to take a look. We've got APOC will probably be covering these back hallways. Um, and uh, I, I kind of call this uh, sort of a, it's a kind of a U-shaped hallway. It's, it's a, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. It basically looks out into red side um, yeah. from, from afar. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, watch that being said, we yeah, rush zone, two guys, three guys, four guys from the backside, They're able to take down Rio, and oh my god, they are planting. Holy poop yeah, nuggets. I but but right now, street. that's going to put a lot of pressure on them, because obviously SGS are up now, and they're going to be coming from, uh, from red side here. I think they're going to be going towards Link and trying to take it over. Samurai has pulled off a kill on the Bourne, ATI on the midair, so maybe they can take this and defuse that Rio with a headshot. Ducky trying to keep him alive. They cleared it. APOC. Oh no, GFN is the last guy standing. He's going to go down, but here comes the uh, disarm, and there's plenty of time. Yeah, I think they got remaining. this. Ducky's on low HP anyway, and APOC will take him out. And uh, actually, I want to go over and see what uh, Rush Zone are going to do right now, because as I said, they are in the hot seat. There's nine minutes left. They know realistically it's going to take them about eight minutes to get to the finish. If they don't get this plant down right now, it's going to be increasingly difficult for them to even finish this uh, the, the second point. That being said, here comes Bourne able to take down two. Uh, APOC and Xeranok will go down and Bourne takes cover. Let's see if he can hang on to it. We also have Inv coming in as a medic and yet another plant. So uh, this time, does Rush Zone have enough time to get set up to stop this push? It looks like SGS is coming through um, red side on, uh, on blue side's far right. And oh wow, really bad placement by Bourne. He was way out in the open. He really should have used cover and he's already down and out. Uh, that being said, the engineers are, looks like they might be down. The engineers might be down. Yeah, the they are. are. Are they gibbed? But, oh, no, here they come. Here they come. 
But oh. it, the question is, will Rush Zone get there? Because we can see Ducky coming really fast towards top, but I think they're going to get... Yeah, they got that. It, real, this is going to be... I'm, I'm just going to predict that SGS take this right now because it, eight minutes left on the clock. They're going to need around eight and a half minutes to get to the finish, especially against a team that's on their skill level. So right now, the entire point for them is to just get as far as they can. So, so basically you're saying that uh, due to the quick time, you, you, you don't see it beatable? I, I don't I don't see Russell winning this map no. They, okay. There's just there there's <laughs> because they get they they get the opening frags and that's the whole point. Look at Ducky. He gets the opening two frags. They always get the plant down and then they just lose it. Like they aren't taking those spots where you're able to get an angle yeah. on the yeah. on the spot well enough. And uh that being said, they're pushing red side right now, um, and it looks like they have actually maybe a plant on blue. Let's see what yeah what we got going on. Yeah. Oh, the mine will take out Ducky. Oh, He's down. Wow. Here comes the medic, though. But already have the respawn for SGS, man. They are going to flood this room. Yeah. And Ducky's just now getting revived. So, honestly, Ducky should turn and try to use uh, firepower. He should not try to plant. He should look for cover. And he's trying to hide. Not really in a very good spot. And he will go down. APOC, so, yeah. I forgot to mention earlier, APOC is the brother of Samurai. So, I think they're landing together right now for this. Oh, and cool. So, obviously, they've got the whole communication thing going on with each other. Let's yes. run in, yeah. But, uh... Yeah. Looks good here. <laughs> six minutes and 45 seconds left on the clock. I, GFN is actually in the site. I don't know if you've noticed this, but GFN is actually on, uh... I think that's blue. No, that's red. GFN is in red. And he's just hiding. I think he's yep. gonna go for a, he's been a bad spotted. creep. No, he, he gets taken down by Samurai. And uh, yeah. but as I said before, six minutes left on the clock. It, it, you got to be honest, <laughs> Greece. I mean, it, yeah. it, 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 this is just—they're not going to finish it. They just don't have the time. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, they—they they basically have to have a cakewalk in order to get the escort there. Yeah. By now. Um, that being said, I mean, it, it did take SGS a, a few minutes to at least get their plant down. Uh, I think we've passed that point though, surely. Yeah. So, um, you know, pretty. Pretty decent, though, that Rustone's been able to plant, I think, two or three times. Um, had you know, had they been completely held off, then I would be a little bit concerned about the next map, which is going to be Resort, I believe, um, which also starts with a plant objective, um, but leads to a different kind of escort objective. Uh, that being said, we got Rustone. Uh, let's take a look at the setup. Uh, we've got maybe two about to press back, uh, backside blue. Inv is one of them. I'm going to follow him. And look at this perfect timing, though. Midair will go down, but uh, GFN and Inv pressing in. Oh, my goodness. Actually, they had someone flanking. Zernok. Zernok. He's, nice. he's an unbelievable player. He just came out of nowhere. He was literally the backup in their team, and uh, he couldn't commit towards uh, the actual play times that they needed. And one of their players left, so they added Zernok as sort of like a trial basis or whatever. And Zernok ended up being an amazing player. And it, it really showed right there. That was a key point. That was definitely a key point because Rush Zone could have got into that site, but Zernok completely denied them from the back. And it, yeah. I just want to ask, Joe, you got anything to say or you just... <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just letting you experts take it over because it's the best way for. <laughs> Uh, for the stream, I think. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm impressed, I have to say. From my limited knowledge, SGS are looking pretty damn good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, here's the main thing that I would point out. And I don't know if you want to go, like, um, free cam on the blue side. Uh, I mean, you can tell a lot about where the bodies are, okay? Um, we got two guys from SGS that just died, right? But take a look at how they were set up. Rio is going to try to repair the turret. He might go down as well. Um, important thing, though, is that we don't have a uh, soldier up. But if you take a look at like where SGS is going to set up as yeah. soon as they, they have everything cleared, uh, you're going to see crossfires. Um, and you're going to see guys behind cover. Okay, They're not going to be poking out too far um, from, from their cover. And uh, that's kind of the most important thing. And that's, quite frankly, the difference that we're seeing between uh, Rush Zone and SGS is um, between the, you know, the, each team's defense of the objective. Well, we, one they're thing basically... 
one yeah, thing that I want to get on for uh, for people who who are tuned in that don't play Brink is the uh, the point of this turret right here because they might be looking at that turret as why is that on a well? Why is why is that on a, a random coil or whatever? But you see it firing right there. It's aimed exactly at the point where they have to plant the explosives. So it. It sort of distracts them as soon as they come in because they've got players to take care of. Then they've got to turn around and take care of this turret. If they completely focus on the players, the turret will hit them from the back. If they completely focus on the turret, then the players will hit them from the back. So there's a lot of multitasking going going on um, right here at this first point, and that's a definite. I, I like this turret, even though it's down now. Yeah. But well, uh, the, the the other thing that's really important about the turret is it almost forces the waste of one gr one player's grenade and when you only have five people on either side and grenades are basically on a timer every every one that you throw um, you can't throw another one for a certain number of seconds now another piece uh, to that the exception to that is the soldier look at this rest of them making a really solid push they might get a plant here but with only two minutes 30 two minutes, seconds 30 they don't have time seconds. for the escort That's... samurai is still up good lord kill that guy <laughs> Oh my god! I, I told you. Up. I told you at the beginning. He 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 does. He's not afraid of anything. He's a, he just <laughs> runs in, and uh, I th I think it sort of helps uh, that he's a bit whacked in real life as well. But uh, <laughs> that the plant is down now, and the only thing yeah. that I'm wondering is, will they even get past this first point? Because samurai comes in, takes no, they're, out they're GFN, blows into Born, and now they're. The samurai goes back onto in that's three kills within 10 15 seconds and yeah they're gonna I mean, get this diffused i think this is gonna be a full hold honestly i yeah i, I think yeah, so which, which means which means basically since redstone can't beat sgs this time then sgs gets two points yep. and we move on to the next map yep. now one, one thing i wanted to mention though uh from earlier is that um yeah the grenades are really kind of the key thing and that's quite frankly i feel is something that's missing from redstone's game um the soldier has is, is kind of your your heavy weapons guy, but he's also the guy that can throw a grenade, and then right after that he can throw a, a, a Molotov cocktail, and he can also throw a flashbang. So soldiers are kind of your um, make it go boom class, and you can throw um, a normal grenade, a Molotov, and a flashbang all in quick succession. Okay, uh, in other words, they're not on the same timers. Yeah. Um, however, once you've thrown one of each, they each have their own. Uh, timers and, and you can't throw another until uh, each timer has recharged. So, you know, kind of really important thing to mention. Uh, that being said, uh, you know, take a look at the class loadout, something we didn't even uh, get into. Uh, Ducky is the only guy in security that's a soldier. We have two engineers and, uh, and we have two medics. Now, um, I, I quite frankly, since they've been hitting their head against the wall um, so often, the, the two engineers actually make sense to me, but only if they have enough time after they've cleared um, the room in order to lay down offensive turrets and offensive mines. Yeah. Well, one and of the since, things... since they don't have time to do that, I might have gone with two soldiers, at least until they're past the subjective. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things that uh, we used to run in my old team, and it, it, I'm not saying it worked really well, <laughs> because obviously <laughs> we didn't get out of top 16, but uh, we used to run actually three soldiers on attack. And the entire point of that is we would coordinate our flashes. And yeah. another another thing for the people that don't play Brink is the flashes on Brink are really, really powered. They, they've they've yeah. got a, a long hang time, and if you can perfect them, then you know it, it can work out to your benefits. And yeah, um, I mean you you can literally with successful flashes blind someone for about what 12, 15 seconds. Yeah, yeah. I mean it, it's ridiculous how yeah. long it is. Well, uh, there, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, well, what happened there? Okay, mission completed. Yes, we understand that. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the awards there. Best overall was midair. Hmm, surprisingly. Yeah, really quick. Uh, Dookie Soldier, Medic Midair, Engineer Rio, and most kills, APOC. Well, uh, APOC, yeah. him and Samurai were competing for that one, but, uh, now let's, we're gonna go into resort and, uh, I guess I'll tell you a bit about resort there, Joe. That's what, exactly what was on my lips, just as you said that, honestly. Well, um, resort is, let me make sure I'm on spectator. I am on spectator. Resort, um, let me see if there's another spawn point. No, there's not. I'll just have to fly to it. <laughs> resort, the first point is here, this pillar. 
they have to blow up that pillar. And when the, the second they blow up that pillar, they can continue on, and then they move a tank all the way towards down the river, and then they go into a hack room. So there's actually three things that they need to do here. Well, well actually, there, there's actually four, because there's a secondary oh, yeah, detonation they need objective. To, they, need to do, they need to um, blow up the... What? The bridge. The bridge. Like, the like bridge. basically, uh, the, on the escort bot objective, there's going to be a bridge that blocks the bot's path. Yeah. So it, it's sort of part and parcel with the escort, but you have to destroy the bridge for the bot to get through. So it's basically uh, two bomb objectives, one escort objective, and the hack objective. And um, a lot of teams won't even bother to move the, the bot up until the bridge is done, because if you can get a quick plan on the bridge and get it done, then moving the bot is just so much easier. Than, than getting it caught on that bridge. So we'll have a, hopefully have a chance to take a look at that. And that being said, um, this time around, we're probably going to see Rush Zone on the uh, on the attack first. Yes, good, okay. Yeah, um, yeah which is, that, that's how it should be. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and um, let's see. Now, uh, about this map, we might actually see some sniping because uh, Resistance, who's um, going to be attacking on this map, uh, they have a really annoying chance of getting held at their spawn unless their um, unless their snipers are good. I've got some <laughs> sort of tool tip <laughs> on my screen and it's death. not going away. It's just saying death. It's because you're a noob. <laughs> okay, uh, one thing that I want to get onto is the green. Hennessy and uh, green. We just always call it green. There's Hennessy. Right. Um, the thing is if the defense side can take over green and Hennessy, they can hold it really well. And this is Fashionista. This entire white shop is Fashionista. It's a gigantic shop. Not a lot of teams go through it, but... Uh, the rush zone is. Well, just, I don't know how well that's going to work out for them, especially with uh, Zernok and Samurai there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Three they, kills. They've still got two, though. Oh, midair does get up and uh, takes one out with a knife. But my I, God, man, Rio, Samurai, and... Uh... And Zernok have been so ridiculously yeah. good at getting their own revives. Look at Apoc taking out three of his own. Four. Make that four. He just completely yeah, shut good, down Fashionista on his own. Good That's... job. Well, well, I got to give credit to, to his teammates because they died beforehand. Uh, yeah, but he had four people shooting health, at him. But... You have four people shooting at you, <laughs> and you yeah, take all of them out. This is true. So. But uh, the thing I was saying was, if you take control of uh, Hennessy and Green on defense, you can basically lock out that side of the push. So they're forced to push Fasanista, or they're forced to stay and spawn. The other way that they can go is uh, this little door right here at the bottom. We always just called that underground. If you hack that door, you're able to get into the door, and you can go up through underneath them through the escalators. Uh, not a lot of teams do that nowadays. They go for more aggressive pushes because... Uh, taking the time out to go ahead and hack that door sort of makes yourself vulnerable because as soon as you start hacking the door, the, it shows up that they're hacking the door and then you've got about five guys jumping on your head and then you're taken down. But um, yeah, right now I'm going to look at what SGS are doing. And, uh, well, see if we, I... we, got, we got mines being planted. Um, Samurai yeah. has, has set up, uh, basically he's using a mine as a way to let them know whenever they push Fashionista, the, the main route near the command post. That being said, that allows him to then focus on actually Hennessy. We got a Hennessy push that's been almost demolished. We got uh, Ducky trying to survive. He's going to try to knock down Rio. Yeah, they he gets a nice get little um, do they melee. Have a and, up? Ooh, they ooh. do. Mm. Yeah, but, but oh, this SGS is oh, right they, they there. got it down. They got it down. If they can hold Hennessy right now, they've got a good chance of blowing up this pillar. But that's not Ooh, going to help them. Make it. He's, he's just running in the middle of nowhere, and then two of them get taken out. that be in, in midair. And now Zernok throws a beautiful nade. Zernok with a triple kill. And I'm telling you right now, Apoc, Zernok, and Samurai Ooh. are playing beautiful. Yeah. They not, are playing not, beautiful. Now, did you count how many times your screen shook? That basically means the nades were going off, right? Yeah. And almost all those nades were SGS. Now, again, going back to the last map, I mentioned this, but I want to really emphasize it again. We are not hearing and seeing the grenades from Rush Zone as often and as um, in, in such a, I guess, a useful manner from Rush Zone. So it's basically SGS. They're, they're dominating Rush Zone because they can knock them on their ass. Yeah. One thing, one, one thing that I do kind of like about this game, and a lot of people will object to me, is uh, you can shoot your nades midair. 
Yes. So you can throw a nade, and it doesn't matter how primed it is, it doesn't matter what point it is, if you shoot it, it blows up midair. So that, that always makes for perfect timing if you just want to take out a quick enemy. And yeah. uh, there we go, Zernok taking out two, and uh, Apoc using the Richie Revolver. I love the Richie Revolver. It, it does so much damage, but it's so hard to control that, uh, that if you're not good with that slow of a firing pistol, you shouldn't use it. Potential potential plan here. Uh, Ducky's going way forward though, trying to clear out Samurai, and he's able to get it done. So actually, this is this is kind of an important thing. What he's done, he potentially could flank here. Oh, is he gonna get spotted? Yeah, Rio spotted him. Yeah, and now he gets Nade, an Nade knocks him down. So down yeah. he goes. Okay, so so again, look at how often SGS is willing to use their nades, and compare that to the nade usage of Rustone. Now Rustone is using their nades, but it's just not it's not as like um, it's it's scary how often you're seeing nades come off from SGS. Yeah, and they they use their nades to to their benefit. I mean, uh, some of their kills, most of their kills. I'm gonna pull up the scoreboard here. Um, a lot of people will be confused by this because it is actually not a kill death type scoreboard. Um, it is an experience scoreboard, and what that means is for every buff you do, for uh, every shot you hit, for every uh, nade you hit for every flash you hit what have you everything you do that is beneficial got a plant by ducky oh, He's gonna get you? taken down though. No, nah, he's Zernok and Apoc are here. Yeah, he's taken down But uh, you get experience for that and right now midair is leading with the experience, but Inv is not Long behind they're actually on the same experience. What a coincidence. Yeah, well well basically medics tend to get higher experience because in every spawn wave you want to be uh, providing your your teammates with Additional pips of health basically you, yeah. you do that by just injecting them with the syringe. It's a health buff Engineers have the ability to provide weapon buffs which um, for ESL rules they deny the ability for the um, improved weapon buffs So you're seeing a maximum of a 17% increase in in weapon um, Damage which is actually still really significant uh, the improved weapon buff which is not allowed is a, a full 30% increase Which is just kind of ridiculous um, so you know, the, basically buffing your team as an engineer or as a medic, it is pretty much your primary role. Medics, of course, have the additional role of being able to um, revive teammates when they go down. And um, just as a, uh, for people that are completely new to Brink and don't really understand the revive mechanic, the reason why you see guys like Apoc, he's down, he was down on the floor and he's kind of writhing on the ground, but um, now you're seeing all these nades come in. These are basically the medics that are tossing Lazarus grenades in order to try to get their um, teammates revived. Now, it is possible once a player goes down to pump more damage into them in order to completely give them or to complete, you know, basically to completely kill them so that a medic can't even revive them. Um, but as long as you see them writhing on the floor, then they are revivable. Well, I just want to go back into the game. We had about a <laughs> three, four minute talk about this entire map and, uh, and the mechanics of Brink there. And um, right now, Rush Zone... That's that's another thing that we spoke about last map Greece is uh, they're they managed to get into the sites They get into the site and then they just throw it away And that's that's one thing that's uh, that's sort of aggravating about it all is SGS shouldn't have a chance to retake the site like they do and They just come in full storm and I, th I think it's purely down to maybe some miscommunication on the rush zone side But I, I, I honestly couldn't tell you because I'm not in their mumble. I would I would love to be a fly on the wall right now listening to their uh, comms, but uh, I think they're just a little bit miscommunicated. And when they're setting up their selves on the site, they're just missing opportunities that they shouldn't be. Well, we got Rushstone, uh, pair are pushing, no, three are pushing Fashionista. Uh, Apoc tried to do a little bit of flanking, but I think he was pulled down. Uh, most importantly, though, uh, Rio sees it all and he's giving a call to his teammates. We're about to see SGS shift over to the side because uh, Rushstone has completely taken Fashionista. Now, uh, Ducky is kind of pushing all the way up to the escalators instead of planting. He wants to find ATI. He's able to find him and, and takes him down with a Molotov, but already we're seeing SGS able to um, respawn and get back in. So, Ducky's kind of lone wolfing it right now. Yeah, yeah I mean, but he, he did manage to take out three, so there is some props for him right there. Yeah, but and, they're not uh, good, though. You need that additional yeah. firepower from your teammates in order to make sure everybody that goes down stays down. Because right now, had SGS been, been gibbed, 
um, they would be respawning and it would probably take another 10 seconds or so. Yeah, because I, I think Rio, yeah, Rio is, is one of their guys that I think actually got gipped. So they would be arriving on the scene right now. Uh, and that would be time for Rush Zone to be holding this room. And that's, of course, not the case. Well, going back on what I said earlier in the game, there's APOC throwing a nade deep in. And uh, like I said, you control this green, you can basically push them out of Hennessy and green. But GFN actually, that was a beautiful shot from the Richie Revolver. That was complete long range. I didn't expect that to happen at all. But uh, I'm just looking over here at Joe, and he's <laughs> staring at the screen in amazement, just has no idea what's going on. That's <laughs> not true, actually, because <laughs> this map is actually one that I've watched more than and played more than any else. Actually, I watched a, a game from Grease Scotsman yesterday about it, actually. Oh, so, Grease, you're famous. You've <laughs> so, got, you've so got, I am you're indeed, using I'm, our stuff I'm for, uh, the source for That's not good. And I, no, I've I'm, chewed I'm all my playing. fingernails off. This is an intense <laughs> game. You, you should feel uh, happy right now. You've got Joe Miller watching your, your VODs. How do you mm. feel about that one? I don't know. It's uh, I, I'm, I'm a little bit afraid at this moment. <laughs> I don't know. No, but uh, we do have two guys from Rush Zone trying to push. Uh, in, actually, they actually pushed into Krill, which is kind of you take Fashion and Easter, and then there's a, a kind of a back path. That being said, uh, Ducky ducking for cover. But he's not going to be able to survive. Zernok is there, and I think he's got Rio as a respawn. So, yeah. Rush Zone, again, they have never really held this room. They can get in here, they can get some kills, but they're not getting the Gibbs. And, um, you know, it's, it's not about taking a room, it's about holding the room and then being able to defend the room. And we just have not seen that kind of coordination from Rush Zone yet. What is uh, GFN? Oh, GFN's going up. I love this. I want to see if this works out. He's going to go towards the uh, underground door and try and hack that. That could yeah, might prove as well. that. I don't. I don't know if that'll work out. He just got the hack box on, and surely they know it now. Are they going to push him though? Yep. And he's he, he's, he's not really. Yet. He should have been at that yeah. cover beforehand, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, Xerox able to pull him down pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, they're not even going to bother with a, a dehack. Of course, I don't think you can dehack. Um, no, you, a, you can't ESL. dehack. It's, it's against the rules. Right, right. Which which okay. makes sense anyway. I mean, it's kind of boring if you dehack it. It's That's just <laughs> plain. Yeah. yeah. That being said, though, they, they did improve the, the hacking time. It's yeah, they did. I think they increased it by 0 0.03. <laughs> yeah, that being said, GFN is on this, and we are at about 50% uh, almost. Oh, 30, that's right. I, I can look up at you the friggin' percentage now. now. <laughs> I, I'm so used to just flying in and having, having to look at the actual objective in game. That being said, Rush Zone is outside green, trying to push in. They're about to hit a mine. There's a mine over here somewhere. Oh, it looks like they already took it out with their face, so it's actually gone. <laughs> Invis up top. Um, SGS has collapsed back on the objective. We can see Xernok. And Samurai, the last two up though, we got a respawn of uh, at least two SGS guys. They're about to enter the objective room. And the shop door has been hacked, so I'll now it cannot be unhacked. Um, SGS will have to pay attention to uh, the escalators that are kind of in the back of the, um, uh, excuse me, the, the back of the objective room. So it's a whole other route they have to be cautious of. Yeah, that's that's one thing that I was saying earlier. It's It's... I, I see it as sort of a, a waste of time, really, because e even if you send one guy down there, there's going to be another guy. Look, ATI is already down here waiting for it. So even if you send one guy, it's still going to be one versus one and four versus four. Yeah, but, but here's, the, here's the thing, though. They have to now waste a guy or two on this area. And, you know, uh, of course, the, the best way to do it is just to plant a mine down there and use it as a uh, kind of a doorbell to let you know whether or not... Uh, someone's coming from escalators, but um, I mean, it's you know, the fact that it only took them about a minute to get the the door hacked. I would say then that's perfectly worth it. I think the problem becomes, um, it becomes a problem if you are constantly trying to hack that door and you just can't get it, and you're wasting you know five minutes on it. That's when it's a waste of time. But when you can get it done in, in the amount of time they did, that that's good. We got Born making a press in. He is the second soldier. Look at that perfect nade by Rio. Rio will go down though to a gunfire from GFN. We do have a plant. No, I, oh man. How Goodbye. do you miss a shot like that, ATI? How do you miss a shot like that? But falling back on what you said earlier, they got the HE charge now, but uh, I think it wasn't worth it because they took 13 minutes in total to get to that point where they did hack the door. Yeah. That being said though, Rushstone has done a better job of finding cover Oh my god, that's three SGS kills, one ducky finally getting one, so here comes the disarm, and look how far back and 
what a nice, uh, easy stroll AT I had getting this objective. Um, you could see that he was yeah. the last guy in this room because he is the engineer that can disarm the charge. So fantastic work there. He's just basically waited for everything to be clear. And that's exactly how you got to play this. That being yeah. said, Bourne is still in this room. He'll go down to three, though. No, I, I think SGS are just way too, too, uh, I don't, I don't know how to put it. They're, good? they're just, yeah, they're good. I mean, but they're good because they have that teamwork. I mean, obviously, you know, two of them are brothers and then you, they've been together since 2008, 2009 playing different games. So they've switched games together, ET, blah, blah, blah. So they know how to play with each other. They know how to communicate with each other. And <laughs> Kinky. That, <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that that's great. Just <laughs> no, but but in all honesty, it's it's really showing right now. All right. That being said, we got Rush Zone pushing Hennessy. Ducky's there getting shot in the face. He's able to take down one. Oh, again, Apoc with <laughs> Hero Molotov point blank, and uh, that will end Ducky's push. But you know, again, the attack comes in, nades all over the place, almost entirely uh, from SGS's point of view. Uh, in my humble opinion, when you're playing a map like this, since you've got five guys and you have to cover so much ground, and uh, on offense you don't necessarily know the, the positions of the defense as you push, use your nades. It's, I think, far more worth it to um, you know, lead with your nade. And even if you're wrong, like even if a guy is not around the corner, use the nade. Yeah. You know, and, and, and basically, if nothing else, it's going to push them back. And once you have them contained in this room, then that's when you can just start, you know, hammering away. But we've never seen Rushstone able to contain this. Yes, they're always able to get back out um, to Hennessy, to Green, and uh, continue damage. So, well, one thing I don't see Born making use of is his flashes. I have not. Yep. I don't know about you, but I have not seen one flash go into Pillar. Nope. Nope. I, not one. And he's playing Soldier. Realistically, Soldier should be the person that's doing the most damage with his Molotov, knocking people down, and getting those plus 120s with his flashes. And he has not thrown one flash. And that is really, really hindering their team's performance right now. Yeah. And, and again, the flashbang and the Molotov are on separate timers. You can, you can literally, as a Soldier, throw a flash, throw a Molotov, throw an aid. Yeah. Um, and we're just not seeing it. So I, we, we do see Molotovs, though. I mean, you know, we are seeing those, but quite frankly, the Molotov is, I think, the weakest. If, if a flashbangs are used correctly, then Molotovs are actually kind of the weakest of the soldier's abilities um, when it comes down to it. Yeah, I mean, um, well, there's three, th three minutes and 40 seconds left on the clock. Uh, Greece... <laughs> What are your predictions, man? Because you know, you know where I, I'm I, I saying. see. You I see know. another plant in RZ's future, but um, what I don't see from them, like right now, okay, um, Ducky should not even go in. Okay, he's making the smart move and he's he's finding cover. Apoc will actually take him out. So now, because he just died, now he won't be with his team when they when they make this push. So now it's a, it's a four v whatever push, and I think at this point, Rush Zone is literally just rushing. That's yeah. their zone. And we'll see the results because, quite frankly, if they keep rushing, we, we're not going to see another plant. The only reason they got a plant in the first place was because they had a coordinated push, surprisingly through Fashionista, I think twice, and then once through Hennessy. And everything's kind of just disjointed right now. So, Well, we know they can't finish this map. There, there's... I mean, for the people that don't play Brink, they might be thinking, two minutes, 40 seconds, they can still finish the entire map. But this map is so massive that... Uh... <laughs> takes longer for the bot to take its route than two minutes 30, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I think it takes two minutes just after the, the bridge, because you have to blow up the bridge. And yep. uh, I don't know. If, if, if SGS, I think if they fold hold, full hold right now, and then they finish the first point on attack, they've won it, right? Yeah, yeah, because they've gotten further than than the team um, than Rush Zone. So yep. two minutes left on the clock, and um, yeah, I mean, I I honestly don't know what to say anymore because at, everything that I keep saying about Rush Zone is sort of like a reoccurring story. They just keep doing the same thing over and over again, and I have the feeling that they're not even anti-stratting. And I, I'm not going to take anything away from them. I like the guys on Rush Zone and. And honestly, I think they're they're a great team. Oh, they're a great team, yeah. 
But uh, I, I think that they're just not too focused right now, although I, I'm not one of their players, so I honestly wouldn't know. But right now, this uh, taking 19 minutes to do the first point, me as a player, I would be devastated right now because I know that I have to full hold. And that's a lot of pressure because if SGS get that first point, that's their Gamescom dream out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and thank you for kind of bringing it full circle to, to, to what we were talking about even on um, before we hit F3s on Aquarium, which is, yeah, Rush Zone, really decent team. But um, you know, I, I see sort of a, a lack of flexibility in, the, in their strategy. Now, one thing I have to say, uh, I, I do find that the, the hacking of the shop door was, was good. Like that was kind of a good opener. That maybe should have happened um, maybe two or three minutes earlier. On top of that, um, it, it seemed like there was, uh, as time went on, there was less and less coordination between the rust zone pushes. So you stop seeing, you know, two guys going this way, three guys going this way. Or if a guy survives a push, he's not falling back to rejoin his team. He's actually staying in the room and waiting to die and then uh, having to basically be out for the next push. I mean, it's all about coordination in this game. Everything is coordination. And uh, SGS is just better at it right now than Rushstone. They're yeah. calling the GGs. Yeah, because it makes sense, right? If SGS hold here, the worst that can happen is a 1-1 scoreline. Right, which ah. brings them to three, which is, yeah, which is so, enough is GG. for the win. SGS are our first finalists at Gamescom. I called it. I, I called it. <laughs> but let's be honest here. Did you expect it to happen right uh, now at this I, stage of the game? I thought I thought Resort was going to be a lot closer than that. I, I honestly didn't think it would be a full hold because both of these teams are on the same skill level. And it, I think it, you said something about how you enjoyed that they you know actually went for the door the the thing that i would have done and and uh th that i would have tried to done is tried to done a first hennessy push if that didn't work out then i get two ops up then i go for the door and once oh, yeah. i go for the door if i can't get that up then i keep hammering hennessy because fashionista is one of the points where i always hated going into because they can flash it they can mine the doors and the back l and then they can just completely dominate you in it and um uh, I, I think it's, it was just sort of unlucky the way they played it. They took too long to get on that door. Uh, the question is now, are they going to play out or what? They might. They might. They might. Yeah, yeah they're going to play out. They're F3s, and, and they might at least play it to the first objective just as, uh, yeah. you know. It's good. Just sort of like a <laughs> let's completionist sake. Let, let's, yeah. let's play you. Let's congratulate you at getting Gamescom. And uh, one thing that I, oh. I, I'm not sure is, is, is the... Um, trips to Gamecom, are they paid by ESL or are they paid by the teams themselves? That's I think, I think Joe, Joe is opening up his wallet. I, that's what I heard. <laughs> hey, if you look in my wallet, there's not enough money to get on a bus, never mind a trip to Gamescom. <laughs> Fair enough. Actually, okay, I'm, I'm going to so ask, what's the, what's I the, real ask answer? the admins about that. I, I do, honestly, I don't know. I'll ask the admins about it. Let's see. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and do a, a rundown on what they're playing here. And uh, it, actually, I'm not going to do that yet because it looks like they're making a Hennessy push. And I love this. I love the Hennessy push. And I'm just going to see if they can actually make it in. APOC does open up with Inv. Yeah, they haven't pushed out of Hennessy yet. And APOC will open up on the Bourne again. Ducky's trying to deny them. And yeah, Rush yeah, Zoner. Nice work by Ducky. Uh, yeah. He will go down, though, finally. Shots from the back. Xernok's trying to press in. Honestly, Xernok is at the yeah. point where he might need to back off. Yeah, All he's right, down, so and so he's not going to be part of this push. So this is actually a, a minor mistake by SGS. But other thing to consider is that the, the push happens so quickly that Rush Zone's not set up in this room. Um, I'm looking around for mines and stuff. I don't see them. Do you see uh, no. at least a turret somewhere? No, I don't, I don't see anything. I, Do you I see think buffs on guns? I, I, I see I SGS completely trying. buffed. I extremely honestly well don't buffed. think they're trying. I, ju I just think they're just doing this as sort of like a uh, let's play for fun thing. But uh, okay. I'm, like I said, I was going to do a little rundown. I mean, it, it's it's for fun at this point. But uh, on SGS, they've got one engineer, which, uh, which I sort of like because mm -hmm. uh, the engineer on, um, on attack can be overpowered um, in the sense that, I mean, if they... If they manage to get the plant down, he can get a turret down, and he can get yep. a mine down. 
and that's going to really hinder their defusal because if he gets a turret say right about let me go ahead and fly where am i i have no idea where i am <laughs> okay now i'm outside of hennessy if he can get a turret down like right here at the rock as soon as they're defusing that turret's gonna nail them and he can put a mine down right there and that's perfect that's why i like their setup they're running two soldiers one ng and two medics and i think that's a perfect um attack setup right there i agree i agree and, and plus you know the the dual soldiers gives you uh, an additional flashbang an additional molotov an additional grenade all in the span of a few seconds yeah. um now i i am watching uh, like born try to protect himself against xerox and he will not win so yeah xerox wins the firefight um so that was that was the engineer on Rushstone going down. The turret's already down. Samurai's taking it down from afar. Um, he's trying to dodge mines. I think he has an idea of where they might be. And look, look at this. They've pushed into uh, Krill. And they're, they're using this as a staging area. Uh, yeah, they've got the HE down now. now. Now, the only question that I'm asking right now is if... Uh, no, ATI is all the way in spawn. But they, they should be... They might be able to take this now. I think they're, they're going to take this. They're setting up on top. They're setting up in back krill, and there's ATI. He's going to put the mine Here's down. There's the mine. There's the mm -hmm. mine. I, I called the mine. I wonder if he's going to go for the turret as well behind the rock. No, he's not going to go for the turret. He's going to go for the uh, person behind the rock, which is good enough. <laughs> it's good enough, but, uh, yeah, 10 seconds left, and, yeah, that's that's GG. That is GG indeed. Now, of course, they might just keep playing it out, but, but usually the first objective, they kind of go, okay, that's good. Yeah. Um... That being said, here comes a swarm, but it's all too late. Rio the mine the takes out several. With the uh, explosive. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone died there. That was awesome. I went, are they going to keep playing this out? Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Might as well, right? Actually, More right. practice for the finals. Okay, so uh, going ahead, uh, this is the bridge that uh, they have to explode. They have to first get the tank there by uh, babysitting the tank, and then they have to explode the bridge. Tank. Yeah, what game are you playing? It's a tank, man. It's not a bot. I don't know why people are calling it a bot. It looks like a blatant tank. It's can I can I get on the turret thing. of that bad boy then? <laughs> I yeah, wish I could. It would be so awesome if there was a turret on there, would it not? <laughs> that would just be awesome. You just oh, like we got a, a plant heavy... right now on the bridge. Apoc, we'll get it done right now. And uh, wow, he came under zero fire there. He's been backed up by a medic Zernok, uh, playing a great um, pair. And so yeah, here comes Xerox to try to get the revive in and get the kill on midair. Fantastic work there. Already 26 seconds until this thing is detonated. Uh, the bot should be on its way. Is there anybody moving the bot? I'm not. I'm actually unsure of that. They they kind of forgot that part. <laughs> the bot hasn't been moved at all. That's that's love. This is a tank. Is this not a tank? This is this is a pretty deadly looking tank. I think it's a bot. You just don't <laughs> like to agree with me, and therefore you you you've right. ruined me. If it was a tank, it wouldn't last very long. Let's be honest. <laughs> but it's got teeth on the front. Well, that makes it a tank then. <laughs> it does. Okay, yeah, it does. Who needs projectiles when you can bite the other guy? <laughs> Look how slow this thing goes, man. That, that would, if you can if you get bitten by this thing, then there's something wrong with you. Um, that being said, it is being brought up. Apox getting shot in the face though. He he drops back. Who's getting that long range? GFN, I think. Long range shots. I think at this point they're just protecting the bot. I mean, you know, they, they've already won. I think uh, it's actually quite lovely that they're playing this out because normal teams would have just been like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore, and then they would have just connect disconnected. So I think it's a, sort of like a sportsmanship type thing going on it right is. now. It is. Or yeah. maybe maybe they're just trying to rack up points. I don't know if they <laughs> if they get more of a, a point advantage by beating this entire map, but Well no, I, I, it's probably sportsman. I, I see I know the SGS guys, they you know, they love to play. Yeah, for sure. And, and it shows. So here they come we got uh, the bot continuing to move up. It's just now passing the bridge point. Also importantly, uh, GFN is running a sniper rifle. I don't know if you saw that earlier. No. Is he sniping? Yeah. He, well, he was. He, he's coming under fire now, so he switched up. But yeah, you can see in his hand there, he's got the... Uh, I love the sniper at the last point. Like, at the very last point, because oh, yeah. you can camp yeah, up hack. on that balcony. Yeah. Oh my... It is It is so dominating. It's it's ridiculous. Only if you hit the shots, though. <laughs> if you miss every <laughs> shot, then uh, you're, you're pretty much uh, left out of water there. Wow. If you take a look at this, SGS Zernok has already pushed up to the forward uh, capture point, the uh, command post. Yeah. I don't, yeah, he's, yeah he's, he's literally capturing that right now. 
Is and I want to say I, that's I a health that's command a health post or a, or a supply. No, I think that one's a health one. Let, let, let's see. I'm not I, sure at all. I, I never remember to be honest. I've, I think it's supposed to look different, but I'm, a, I'm like too retarded to remember. I've, I've never even gone for that, realistically. So they've got the bot all the way at the gate now. Now, the uh, just go ahead and uh, gonna explain to the people here is uh, once the bot is at the gate, this, this is so slow. Once the bot is here, they have to get to the hack room. Once they hack this, the gate opens up. That bot can go through. You've got me calling it a bot now. It is a tank. Yes. The tank will go Actually, through. Actually, someone in IRC pointed out it's in fact a bot tank. A bot tank. There you go. <laughs> so it's a, it's a, it's we're a both tank. right and both wrong at the same time. I like this Rex guy. He he seems pretty awesome. He's agreeing with both <laughs> of us. He doesn't want to be on uh on either side there. Uh, and can I can I just mention that um uh what the hell was I gonna mention? Shit, I, I forgot now. <laughs> you 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 confuse me with your bot tank talk, sir. <laughs> that being said, we already have a hack going down on this objective. Rio is there. Um yeah, I think this is gonna be over pretty darn quick. I can't see the percentage, can you? That's not showing no, up No, that is a bug. So we have to do nice. it the old-fashioned way, which is to fly up oh, to the actual objective and make a guess. It's about 20%. Yes. Yeah. Rio was able to defend himself. Great, uh, great use of communication there. 25%, 30%-ish. Uh, now, I, I personally can't wait to see SGS at Gamescom. I, I think they're, they're really going to perform well in the final. And so, and so who, who is the other semifinal? Hardware for you versus Epsilon. Yep, and okay. for the guys that have actually uh, seen on the ESL TV schedule, today that game was cancelled, but it's now back on. <laughs> so uh, I've got to change the, uh, the scheduler entry so that it doesn't say that there won't be a game, because there will be a game after all tomorrow night at 9 o'clock German time. So uh, just to awesome. get that in there. And I will be here again. Yeah. Are you yes. going to be here, Greece? Yes. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Then Yay. Joe can sit around and not do anything. You might as well just like get up and just walk you out. <laughs> I'm enjoying the game. That's good enough for me. <laughs> All right, we should be getting pretty close to a full hack. Yeah. No. No. Rio. Are Rio's they, down there. What is he doing? Like, I think he stopped to update his Twitter. No. <laughs> I'm so hacking right now, guys. Back an opening night. Huh? No, he's on what? about 80, 85 ish. What? I do not see that on my screen, sir. I see about 60%. All right, it's in the greens, dude. Green is, is I think, 70 and above. No, green is 30% and above. I beg to differ, <laughs> sir. I, well, it, it's okay if you beg to differ, but you're I? wrong, so it's okay. No, I'm not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you said it was a bot, I said it was a tank. It is a bot tank. Now, we're probably both somewhere right in the middle and it is probably like 69%. No, I, I, in this screen. case, you're, you're not right. It's no. okay. It's I okay though. Right. It's okay to not be right. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I, are they even going for the hack because he just said still 10 minutes? I, I, <laughs> are they going to hold this for like 10 minutes no. and just c keep fighting? No, because Rio keeps getting up there. So yeah, but it'll be nice. slow, but sure. I, I don't really know what the rest of SGS is doing. <laughs> Oh, oh, Zero crash. crash. <laughs> Wait, how did we miss that? That's pretty funny. I don't know. He was he stood at the command post, right? Yeah, I think. But he's having a real long Where decision is... about what. Oh, he's there he goes. He just timed out. <laughs> Thinking about <laughs> getting the command. I post. will use a gun <laughs> that shoots bullets. One thing that I just also don't understand about this game is I prefer the bull pound over the carb nine. Not a lot of people do that. It's it's more consistent. People need to use the bull pound. If you're a new Brink player and you're just coming to Brink right now, use the bull pound. Please don't use the carb nine. The carb nine is just way overused. Yeah, I I don't really know anymore because I'm I'm waiting for the patch that removes the spread. Once that happens, I am playing this game like crazy. They already patched it. No, they made the spread worse. Oh, well that's good. On the carb nine, you mean? No, on all guns. No, the bull pound stayed exactly the same. They didn't change the bull pound whatsoever. Is, is is that gun an AR or is it an SMG? No, it's an SMG. But okay. it, it, it serves as an AR because it has really long distance. Huh. So that's why I like it. Because I don't have to get in their face to kill them. 
And that's why Josh's team lost in the round of <laughs> no, 16. No, let me clear something up here. <laughs> let me clear We lost by default. We lost by default because one of our players had night school on the day. And you can even check the score right now. It was a default I already loss. looked, to be honest. Yeah. I already saw it. It was 1-0. See? Yeah. You're just trying to make fun of me right now. And it's yes, not yes, working. he is. It is not working. <laughs> Again, you know, you can, you can hope for that. <laughs> but anyway, um, yes. So are, are we done yet? No. Okay. <laughs> now, now we're about 70%. No, they are past 70, dude. Look, <laughs> they've got maybe 20% left to go. Rio is hacking. Uh-oh. There's one coming behind him, though. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> I, they're at about 90%. I, I swear down on you right now. Yes, yes. Now, actually, they're about 95%. <sighs> no, how could they get from, like, 70 to 95 within five seconds? <laughs> You make no sense, Grease. I don't know. You're just trying to troll me, man. You're trolling me right now. <laughs> That's what you're doing, and it's not working. <laughs> All right, Rio. Come on, man. He's what's that, what's the 80s song? Why can I not about Rio? Rio? Here comes. Here's the finish. Oh, there we go. Yeah, All he's right. Got he's got it. In about so three, two, seven minutes and 11 go. seconds on the clock. So that's a, it's a time set of, what, 12 something? Nice. 12, math 1250. <laughs> 12 minutes and 49 seconds, to be exact. Let's look at who is the best overall awards. Overall, Rio, Soldier, APOC. Medic, Inf, Engineer, Born, Operative, Rio, Most Kills, APOC. APOC has gotten the most kills on every single map. Uh, he's he's playing phenomenal, and he has. I think he's he's really showing himself right now, because I uh, actually predicted that um, Samurai was going to be the best player, but uh, his brother has showed him out. <laughs> yeah, and apparently they're not playing on. Uh, they're not in the same house, at least. No, apparently not. I asked. Uh, someone said that in a comment in uh, our admin junior, who was, you know, Eagle Eye Cherry, uh, <laughs> went went to the ESL site and found they're using different IPs. Maybe they've got two internet connections in their one house. I I don't know, but, but I know they are brothers, so that's that's at least got to help them in some way. Um, yes, it's a telepathic link. <laughs> except when one when one gets hit in the face, the other one feels it. So you gotta watch out. <laughs> Yeah, so all right. Gamescom is pretty much all set. Let me bring up the uh, the semi-finals once again. I didn't have chance to change the colors of the team names, but you're going to get the general idea. So it's SGS Gaming who will be going to Gamescom to the grand final. They will face either Hardware for you or Epsilon, who will be playing here on ESL TV tomorrow night at 9 p.m. German time, 8 p.m. if you're in the UK, and 2 p.m. Eastern time. Grease Scotsman, please tell me I'm right. Uh, 3 p.m. my time, I think. 3 p.m. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's six hour difference. Plus you six. said 9 p.m. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's because yeah. I, I did six hours from UK time and not British. five hours. Yeah, <laughs> I've lived in Germany long enough to get that right, but I get it wrong every time. Uh, but obviously, you can find the schedule for that over at www.esl.tv. Uh, Josh, mm -hmm. any uh, kind of closing thoughts on the game or uh, maybe we should talk a little bit about tomorrow and what you expect from that one epsilon versus hardware for you well uh just a couple of closing thoughts on the game i mean earlier you know i did predict that it would be closer i i honestly thought that uh that second map was going to be extremely close i thought they were just going to be battling it out trying to trying to uh you know actually get towards gamescom but i don't know sgs were just on point today and uh yeah, mad props to them, and I congratulate them. I, I can't wait to see them at Gamescom. And Greece, anything from you? Uh, I'm going to miss you at QuakeCon, man. Yeah, I know. I, uh, a bit of an annoyance for me that I won't be going to QuakeCon. I uh, got booked to go somewhere else, unfortunately. Which is, by the way, nowhere near as cool as the Hilton Arms Hall in Dallas, so... Unlucky for me, I have to say. That's, Indeed. That, well, was my, that was my summer holiday right there. <laughs> Down yeah. the pan. Yeah. Well... I will, uh, I will definitely be here tomorrow. Looking forward to it, and uh, I hope the Gamescom is a blast when we finally get to the grand finals. And um, I guess who's who's lined up to to broadcast that? I'm curious because I want to tune in. The grand finals. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. Maybe we'll uh, drag Josh along here. <laughs> 
Good luck, Josh. Could be a good idea <laughs> since he's in Cologne anyway. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hey, well, so, uh, thanks for having me, guys. I really enjoyed it. and uh, Our pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Definitely. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, once again, congratulations to SGS. Don't forget to join us 9 o'clock here, same time, almost half an hour earlier, um, uh, for the second semi final. Epsilon versus hardware for you. We'll see you then.